what we found on the bottom of her lay box. Those are some amazing looking eggs. Wow. Hey guys, welcome to another video here at Cloud Colubrids. All right, so this is a really, really special video for me. Really special day. I need a nice cup of coffee. I got it brewing. I'm gonna grab it, come right back, and we're gonna get into this video. So it's a nice rainy day outside. It's a nice relaxing day. Perfect time if you guys want. Grab something to drink, grab a snack. If you want a nice cup of coffee, we could drink together. Maybe a cup of tea or whatever you like to drink. It's your choice. I just wanna make a quick toast to everybody watching the videos and that everybody's safe. <sighs> that coffee's kicking in. I'm down here, guys, if you didn't see me. Now I got something special to show you. Hold on one second. So here's Sahara. And look what we found on the bottom of her lay box. Those are some amazing looking eggs. Wow. Man, I gotta make a toast right off the bat to Sahara and those beautiful, beautiful eggs. Oh yeah. So between that coffee and seeing these beautiful eggs, I'm really starting to get wired up right now. Feeling really nice. And you know, last year I tried to breed Sahara with Mojave and Mojave got a respiratory infection in the cooler so I had to cancel the breeding. This is the first time she ever produced eggs and it's a mountain king snake. I had to keep them in the cooler a little bit longer because they needed nice and cold. I wasn't sure if everything was gonna work out perfectly but it did. So it's like a clutch of a holy breed clutch of a holy breed. So for the egg box, I like to have it clear on top or semi-clear so I could look down, I could look from the sides. You know, I like checking up on these eggs often without disrupting them. You don't need it to be clear on top. You can get those regular white plastic covered ones. But you know, I'm just being a little picky and I got a little nice vermiculite right here. So we're gonna set this up and we're gonna see how many eggs she had and if they're good, so let's go. So first, I'm just gonna open this box up real gently, and remember, the females are a little defensive at this stage, so you wanna be real gentle, let them know you mean no harm, and we're gonna see if we can get her out without causing too much trouble. Now this girl is a sweetheart. She never ever bit me or even attempt so we don't know if she's gonna try now. So far she looks really calm. Wow, she came out real easily. So now we're just gonna gently try and remove this moss. We don't wanna disrupt anything just in case there's an egg somewhere in between. Normally they're all in one little bunch when you put the moss like this. So let's see. This is like digging for dinosaur fossils. You gotta be real gentle and look, we already made a discovery. One beautiful egg right there. I could already tell that's a good egg. And you know what? That egg is pretty long compared to the corn snake eggs that I've been having. Now it's very important when doing this you don't want to roll the eggs over. You want them to remain in the same position that she laid them in. So don't get crazy with it. So we have eight eggs here. All look to be good. I don't see one slug. Let's go candle them real quick and find out for sure. And then we're going to put them in the egg box. All right, guys. So I just candled these and it appears all eight of these eggs are good and healthy. So I'm gonna make a toast to the Holy Clutch. <sighs> so now I'm gonna put the lay box back in in case she wants to relax. All right guys, so now I'm gonna bless this egg box with a little spring water, some good Holy Spring water, get it nice and moist. 
but not wet. So now we're just gonna mix that up. And as I always say, I like to start out with less water and then add more as I need instead of putting too much and then I gotta sit there wringing out the water. So right now I'm just feeling it. I don't have any specific measurements. There's really no recipe. You just gotta play it by touch. Now this is a little on the dry damp side. I just need a little bit more of that water. So that's about perfect. It's not wet, it's not dry, it's just right. And it's starting to clump and the test, this is the test. Grab some in your hand and squeeze it as hard as you could. There's no drips coming out. You want it to where it's damp, but no drips coming out. You don't want it dripping wet. And then when you let go, it clumps just like that. It's still nice and moist. So normally I separate each egg and put them in one by one, but because these are all together the way they are, almost like in a nice link, it looks so beautiful. It's fine that you don't have to take them apart. They could stay perfectly as is. Be real gentle to put them down and they'll hatch out just like that perfectly one by one. You don't have to separate the eggs. It's better to be safe than sorry, you know. I might try and take them apart and, you know, possibly harm an egg when they're tight like that and together. So now I'm just forming the vermiculite around the egg just to nestle it nicely as an anchor. Keep them nice and moist on the bottom. And when I pick up the eggs, pick up that egg box to check the eggs, this will kind of hold them in place as well. In nature, a lot of times the eggs will be buried. So you want to give them a little bit of covering, not too much. So now we're going to cover it up. So just for comparison, I want to show you guys real quick. This is Paprika's eggs, my extreme Abbott's Okati. Paprika and Riddler made this beautiful clutch. A lot of great looking eggs here. And this is the clutch that we just took out today from Sahara and Mojave. Now these are mountain kink snake eggs and these are corn snake eggs. If you could tell, these look more like little bird eggs, nice and oval, I mean, nice and round. And these are elongated and actually bigger. So this is my first time breeding king snakes, mountain king snakes. So I wonder if a lot of the king snake eggs are larger than the corn snake eggs, or is it just coincidence? So Xena, looking really nice she shut out about eight days ago so she should be laying any day now she's teasing me i've been checking up on her every day but she got a lot of scale separation and she looks loaded with eggs and pumpkin shut out about three day, three days ago so she's just hanging out and everyone else is in their lay box now look at this beautiful Arizona mountain king snake. Probably my favorite mountain king snake. One of my favorite snakes altogether. Now I've been waiting every day, checking on all my girls. I still have three or four girls waiting to lay eggs. I've been checking every day and I'm like, today is gonna be the day. Today is gonna be the day they're gonna lay. Keep looking, no eggs, no eggs. So when I saw Sahara starting to lay. I was so excited and finally I thought the eggs were never gonna come Now this is my zebra line Arizona mountain king snake and this guy's name is Bob
beautiful, beautiful zebra line right here. Can't wait to start producing some of these babies as well. So something that I've learned is to be patient. You really gotta be patient when breeding snakes. It could be hard. It could really be hard at times. Sometimes you just wanna constantly check on them, but trust me, it's best just let them be. Just check up on them enough so you know everything's okay and just let them do their thing and they'll work it out. There's so many factors that could have went wrong my first time trying to breed mountain king snakes, but everything worked out perfectly. That rain's coming down and now I'm gonna get a nice dinner. I'm so happy you guys are here with me to see all of this. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next one.